to the Cape Elizabeth School Board regular business meeting for Tuesday, October 11th, 2016. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one on tonight's agenda, there are a couple of adjustments to the agenda. First of all, we are going to table item 6D, which appoints um, school board representatives to the negotiation committees um, for the Cape Elizabeth Education Administrators Association and the Cape Elizabeth Education Teachers Association. Um, we're going to table that until the board meets next week to discuss negotiations. Um, we are also going to move item 6C to the top of the agenda, which is the first read of a few policies. And are there any other requests for adjustments? Okay, seeing none. We should move any public comment on those items up as well. I'm going to run through and ask for comments from the public on agenda items at this time since we are moving some agenda items ahead. So if there's anybody in the public who would like to speak at this time. Seeing none, I'd like to move to item 6C. Thank you, Chair Seyfries. Um, in front of you, you've, you have now proposed policy language first read for uh, public gifts donations to the school, which is amended from the adoption we made last spring. Uh, and then KCDR, which are some procedures. Let me tell you how we landed on this proposal for just a moment. Um, what you'll see in the public gifts donations to the school amended language that's got some red in highlight is we very much appreciated some suggestions from council to bring this uh, do gifts donations to the school's policy in line with statutory regulations. We also talked at length about uh, increasing the amount we authorize our superintendent to accept on our behalf, given the rising cost of a lot of the grants that are requested and awarded to our teachers. So to raise that to $10,000 instead of just five, because so many grants fall in that five to 10 range that really could be handled at an administrative level. Uh, but then what we did is, and so that's mostly what you'll read in KCD. What you'll read in KCDR then are some more generic internal procedures that we're suggesting ha we have in place for particular kinds of grants, especially potential what we call impact grants. Uh, in our process of reviewing these policies, the most feedback we had was from the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, because when we first started talking about this, we were thinking of partnering more in the grant request process. But as we thought about their needs and our other granting organizations, our, our parents associations, our boosters, other regional and um, national organizations that may be offering us grants, we thought it would be more um, sensible to just have procedures internally for grants that fall in certain categories. Uh, for example, if you look at KCDR for a moment, it's, it's clear that we're talking about uh, paying really special attention in communications between the principals, the special ed director, whichever administrator is considering a grant request by a teacher for approval, that a few things would trigger immediate conversations with the superintendent. Uh, that includes 
uh, gifts that would be a gift in trust, a gift of real property, or a gift of any commercial value with the potential to substantially impact the school unit's mission and values, governance, operating budget, equitable allocation of resources, or matters of educational policy. Those are determined to be potential impact gifts. Um, and they may include, but are not limited to, gifts that involve significant additional operation, maintenance, or installation costs, gifts that require facility improvements, renovations, alterations, or additions to school buildings or grounds, gifts that require or create a need to hire new faculty or staff, gifts that require or creates a need for the school unit to budget to provide additional compensation to exi existing staff or staff if such additional compensation is not included as part of the gift, or a gift that significantly modifies an established curriculum or educational policy. So we spent more time talking about, okay, let's figure out ways that, which is kind of where we started back in May and June thinking about this, of really having clearer transparency internally as uh, these grants come to our attention and to get the superintendent and the business manager, whomever, involved at the point when they're under consideration. So that would mean that hopefully by the time they land back with us, and we still would have approval for those 10,000 plus or high impact grants, that um, our partner organizations are very clear that we're delighted to partner on this, our questions have been answered and so forth. So we're really essentially relying on our superintendent and our administrators to talk frequently, to, um, to support innovation, just to really give a careful eye to those potential high impact grants. So I think as you read through the um, KCDR, hopefully that's what you'll find embedded in there. And I think I covered most of the highlights uh, of what's included. Questions? And the only suggestion, Howard, of, I had for one tiny amendment is the cross-reference on KCD included KCD. So let's just take that off the bottom. <laughs> thank okay, thank you. Thank you for your hard work on that. Mm. I know that there was a lot of deep thinking and... Well, we, sometimes you have to talk something a, a lot, around and around, and land in a place that really um, recognizes... Mean, First of all, we want to celebrate the high value of our granting organizations. We want to respect their internal processes, while we also need to respect and anticipate our own needs for having some sense of, of things that are coming our, our way. And I think perhaps this accomplishes it gracefully. We just got to add one comment to that, um, which is also, it also brings us in compliance with a requirement explicitly accept grants, which is a state law, which we were uh, a little bit loose about previous to this to this policy. And that this allows us to discharge our responsibilities that we have in, in being the fiscal uh, responsible agents for the school in taking in money and overseeing. The, so it, it brings it to a point of control. And we've pushed those things that have to do with making sure that we do that into the procedures where they belong with the, mm -hmm. the, with the school administrators. So. Really nice work. Appreciate it. Okay. And um, our next, oh, and KCE, uh, as I said at our last meeting, would have no change then. We'll continue to recognize uh, the Education Foundation for an active partner in, in uh, soliciting grants. The next one is uh, policy JB. This was one that the superintendent felt we should give immediate attention to and deals with uh, the, the rights of our transgender students. And this language came to us through uh, Drummond Woodson and Maine School Management Associations. We did not draft this ourselves whatsoever, but it, but it deals with legally what we need to be doing and ethically what we need to be doing. And I think that as we think about, and as our community thinks about transgender students, the this, um, phrase that jumped out to me was, I think first appears on page two, addressing the needs of transgender students. And it's for the purposes of these, of these guidelines, a student will be considered transgender if at school he or she 
consistently asserts a gender identity or expression different from the gender assigned at birth. And you'll see that language come up over and over, consistently asserts a gender identity or expression different. So that's how you'll read this. Essentially, um, uh, a transgender student would um, be scheduled to discuss the student's particular circumstances with the parents and the student involved, either with the principal or the guidance counselors. An individual plan would be developed, depending on the um, sort of the desires of the student in particular and their uh, privacy. Um, I know a lot of questions come up about restrooms, locker rooms. This policy does uh, allow them to go and um, use their, those that consistently asserted their gender identity. That's where they will be. Sports participation is a whole other bailiwick. And that is not determined by us locally, but rather by the Maine Principals Association. And they have been very active in creating a transgender participation policy so if a transgender student um, chose to play volleyball, let's just say, they would need to make an appointment with the Maine Principals Association, essentially present their case and be heard um, for that to happen. We are completely governed in the high school athletics arena by the Maine Principals Association. So this is not, uh, this is in keeping with their rulings on lots of things. So they would have this opportunity to meet. They've come up with a very aggressively positive policy in support of transgender students. And, um, and there is, is also an appeals process involved should a decision go contrary to what the student and family were requesting. So that part is dealt with um, <laughs> under item five. I have a quick question, a mm -hmm. clarifying question about mm -hmm. that. Um, so the Maine Principals Association covers sports that are actually sanctioned. That's correct. The so, so what happens if there's a sports team on campus that is outside of? Intramurals, we make the call. We make the call. That would be part of the student's plan. Okay. We just have to defer to Do the we MPA. Do we want to delineate that in our policy? I think, let's see. Interscholastic athletics shall be addressed. Locker rooms, restrooms, names. Other gender segregated facilities so or activities. activities. Yeah. As a general rule, in other facilities or activities when students may be separated by gender, transgender it's students. It's in number six, I just yeah. far enough. And I haven't memorized this, so <laughs> I'm glad you asked the question. But, but right, I think that is covered, Joanna. So, thank you. Um, so I think that it's appropriately deferred because it has to be deferred to the Maine Principals Association. It's not because we don't want to deal. Into the we must, yeah. Absolutely. Right. And I like there's also staff training informational materials involved and so forth. So I know that our uh, administrators and Howard were comfortable with this as well. And it, and it did come from, um, it's been fully legally examined as well. We did not write this policy. So questions on that one? And this is a first paper? Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll vote in November on both of, on all three of these. Okay, okay. good. Yes, Please. Uh, with respect to um, E on this policy, uh, it talks about staff training and information materials. Our administrative team met today and we have um, also heard the request from uh, the Associ Teachers Association that they would really appreciate some training. We all agree with that. Mm -hmm. All CSS will do that, and, and we'll be planning that in the next month or two, some uh, training for all of us on just really how do we, um, what, what's our role in this, and, and how do we really roll it out in a successful mm -hmm. way. Great. Yeah. Howard, who, who provides that kind of training? Pardon me? Who provides that kind of training? We, well, we, there are a number of people in the area that you could bring in as consultants to, to provide that. Probably we would start with um, with our attorney, and and, and who helped write the, the, the draft for Main School Board Association. She has a lot of experience in working with schools on on, on how to do this in a very you know, respectful and appropriate way. So we, I'm thinking we'd start with bringing in. Uh, her name is Melissa Huey. Terrific. Thank yeah. you. I noticed for those of you going to the conference that she's doing a whole presentation on this on Friday. So that could be 
potentially interesting to hear how this develops. Uh, you know, there's, um, guidance, but legal basis for that. So I. We don't discuss it now, but I know it says in year several times that claims should be developed and consulted with the student. Um, I'm just curious what is the, you know, if you have a plan, um, you know, the plan, uh, one side isn't happy, not the say side, but someone's not happy with how the plan's progressing. What's the legal. Um, framework or regulatory framework where in special ed you know there's some mandate so is it like federal law or I'm just trying to think of the liability side of the um, something like this well is it our policy is it, you know it's the plan based on or is there a transgender federal guidelines for for schools I'm not it, it looks to be that five is as far as it goes speaking to this right now, Michael, where this okay. is developed with guidance counselors and families that if the parties can't reach agreement, it goes a building administrator or superintendent would be consulted. Um, guidance on specific issues talks about FERPA, of course. Um, but that would, be a, that would be a good question to perhaps uh, consult with Melissa about. Mm -hmm. um, I think because it says a plan should be developed versus must be developed, right. there's this is sort of new territory, and I think that it, it, at this point, at least, it's phrased in a way that's respectful of the family and the student, just to try to put together what feels right for them. But you're right; if there are gra grave differences, where's that resolution? Right now, it appears to be sort of talked through up to the superintendent level. Beyond that, I don't know. I, I'm guessing it gets into Office of Civil Rights beyond there. But it'd be nice to have maybe some of that spelled out in terms of if we can't reach. Uh, well, I was just determining the plan is, and uh, you know, what's best for, you know, how do we meet this student's needs? It's more of a plan to, um, you know, any needs they have, how do we best make sure they get the education they deserve versus, right. not that that's always the plan, but I know in, right some other areas it's more uh, rigid um, yeah. you know legal we can we can consult on that for sure and bring you some more um, thoughts on when we do the second read okay. so yeah. not definitively but my, my impression is some of this is in the process of evolving right now in result of um, conflicts in the law between some states and federal governments and so uh, I think the framework eventually is uh, aligned at uh, making sure to comply with federal law and so uh, and monies that would flow from the Department of Education through states and then through districts and so to the extent you comply with that it would be somewhat similar to but not as uh, uh, in terms of how the money flows to, to special education, but it does not have the same legal framework where there's a federal law that is mirrored by state laws at, at this time. It's just from the, the recent decisions. So, so Thank you. My experience has been that um, the requests that I've experienced with transgender children, students, and their parents have been very basic things that they want to be sure that their children are safe at school, that if they want to go by a, a certain name, that we all respect that and do our best to call that student by that name. Each student wants to wear um, a certain amount of, you know, certain clothing that we would allow any student to, to, of that gender um, to, to wear, that they'd be allowed to do that. I mean, they're pretty basic things. I think where it gets more complicated is the whole, in the bathroom is usually very straightforward. So in some places it hasn't been, but it should. Be. It's pretty basic. But I think what gets more complicated is around um, participation in uh, after-school activities. And again, as Barbara said, the MPA, to their credit, took a real leadership role in helping decide what's appropriate. Um, and then there, there's the whole issue around locker room and showers. And I think that that can be worked out, and I think it will be worked out here. I mean, I don't. I think the larger issue is about students feeling when they're here at school that they're safe, that they're treated equally and fairly, and um, those, are, those can be complicated in certain communities more so than others. But 
I, I, um, I don't expect this to be a, a, a major challenge mm -hmm. for us. I would also point out, Michael, I thought you were going to mention that one thing that Mr. Shedd brought up is the idea of transcripts and the legal name and gender that are supposed to be indicated on transcripts, and that's under item two, under guidance on specific issues, where it says um, official information will only be changed upon receipt of documentation that the student's name or gender has been changed in accordance with any applicable laws. So that's not just well, please do this. There really has to be some legal action through taken through the courts for changing name and gender, which we would then, of course, respect. Um, it, I just had a, a brain uh, <clears throat> For many of the policies that affect students' um, culture in the school, we've often brought the policies up to the, either through the student government or I know that we have a great state at, Gay Street Alliance Club mm -hmm. at the high school. I don't know if you've um, any plans to have this reviewed mm -hmm. and get feedback mm -hmm. from that club. Well, Mr. Shed could do that, perhaps. Right. Yeah. If there was any feedback before the November meeting, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Well, before we move on, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Barbara and the Policy Committee for their extensive work on the policies, um, not just during the school year, but over the summer, the many meetings and the research and the, the very careful and respectful thought that went into everything that we're working on here tonight. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Moving on, backwards first, <laughs> to item two, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the school board minutes as listed under uh, agenda item uh, two. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Moving on to item three, comments by student representatives. Welcome. Hi. Um, so this week is Spirit Week at the high school, um, which always is really fun. Um, today was the first day. Um, and so far, um, school spirit has been really high, really fun. Um, all of the sports, fall sports teams have made it into the playoffs, which I think has been a big contributor to that. Um, as far as academic extracurriculars go, all of those have been preparing for the upcoming seasons. I know mock trial has been reviewing cases, S speech and debate have all been practicing, um, Model UN has an upcoming conference, so those are all going very well. Um, all new clubs that were started at the beginning of this year have in been integrated very, very well into the school, and I know have very high participation. Um, TEDx has started to plan for the events that will be in at the beginning of December, I believe, and all classes are going really well. New, new clubs, tell us. Um, so I, I'm not familiar with all of the clubs. I know that a Democratic club has been started. Um, what they're doing is helping with voter turnout. They've had a few events. Um, TEDx isn't a new club, but it mm -hmm. is, it's just happening this year. It didn't happen last year. They've started to plan. Um, there's a, a musical production club, entrepreneurial club. Just like fun. Of course, there is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have a quick question. Please tell me there's still a barbecue club. Oh, I, barbecue team is still happening. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All is right with the That's right. Thank you. Moving on to. Item five, communications. Jessica, would you like to go first? Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak with all of you, and I'm gonna try to keep this 20 minutes maximum in respect of everyone's time. Um, I sent out the agenda, and I'm just gonna go through some items and just give an overview of how things are going and expectations for the year. Um, so the first thing is I absolutely love the job, I love the department, and I really appreciate how much support that the board and the administration and the staff and the parents and the students, it's been a very good experience so far, so thank you. 
Um, I feel that we're trying to move in um, the mantra is a positive direction. So in everything that we do, we're trying to take the positive spin on it and uh, look at how we can make our procedures and policies more concise and make sure that um, people understand the purpose of what we're doing, not just having things kind of appear. Um, and I think people have been very open to that and um, I've received some good feedback on that. So that's my continued approach. Um, I'll start with items within the scope of this year. So I know that uh, there's been behavior specialists in the district in previous years and uh, without going into too much detail, I've been looking at what we're getting for the money that we're spending. Um, and currently our budget over the last couple of years, and I don't have hard numbers, is increasing. Um, and we're getting one day a week out of consult. And um, I believe last year we paid approximately $30,000 for one day. Um, and so I'm trying to weigh, as we look at year-to-year -year increases, what actually we're benefiting from paying that much for one day versus looking at um, hiring our own and paying us, looking for that five-day span and what those people can provide us. Um, Fortunately and unfortunately, being a BCBA, I kind of know what to expect out of Behavior Consult, and I, um, I, it's hard to manage uh, consultants versus having an internal person where we could access those resources a lot better. Um, so that's just something to think about as we go forward into next year, and of course it's open for conversation, but um, I thought October's a good time for us to start thinking about that. Um, the, the part of having a behavior specialist that kind of wraps into some of the other, tr the other um, items that I've listed is I want to be able to provide our great regular education staff with the ability to support students in the classroom. And I feel like we need to give teachers that baseline of training before we expect them to be able to manage behaviors in the classroom. And I don't think that we have that capacity with a one-day consult. Um, this, in the same um, respect, I think that the special educators um, their roles have been multifaceted. Some years they're expected to do all academic. Some years they're expected to do some behavior. And I just want to make sure that if we're expecting people to do that type of teaching, that they're given the baseline of training and understanding. Um, also with the ed techs, there's definitely an increased requirement um, in their day-to-day -day dealings with students. Uh, we ask them to do data collection, which not all of them have experience with. We're asking them to manage behaviors. We're asking them to modify curriculum on the fly. So these are things that I think we, um, as a department, have to kind of catch up to what we're expecting them to do, um, again, before we can expect them to perform um, the way that I would like everyone to. Um, they, as a whole, the staff has done such a good job, and um, the consultants that, that have come in have we switched consultants, in case you're not aware. The one that we had last year um, had a philosophical difference with the approach that the district is taking, so I brought somebody else in. And this person has been very good about relaying recommendations, and the staff have been very open to make sure that um, protocols are being consistent across students. Um, in the area of curriculum, I saw a need that we... Um, there seems to be a gap in some of the approaches that we were taking with some of the lower functioning students. And again, the teachers have made very good efforts in trying to, to reach all students. And I feel like the pieces, specifically the Reading Plus program, which is good for all students, and um, also the Autism Curriculum Encyclopedia, which targets certain students, but it's also, it has a lot of different facets that we can use for basic assessments. I feel like those two pieces together are kind of filling in the gaps where, especially in the areas of reading um, and functional life skills, where I don't feel there necessarily is a comprehensive curriculum to address those areas, but these kind of fill, as I said, fill in the gaps and help those students work towards a bigger goal. How we're seeing measurable progress. Um, one particular student uh, who is upper level of high school has gone back and forth testing at a fifth grade level for comprehension and fluency, and then his recent evals, he was down to a third grade. Um, reading comprehension and fluency, which, you know, as you can imagine, as his parent receiving that information was a little bit disheartening after no, thinking that they were on one path. Um, this student is pretty resistant to anything that looks babyish. So in order, and right now he's testing even lower. He's at a first grade level when we assessed him. So he wouldn't even approach a curriculum that would be for a typically um, 
a typical first grade. So this, the Reading Plus program, he's been able to interact with the teacher, but also do some stuff on the iPad and uh, just basically take control of his learning. And it's not babyish, and he's actually, he's really, he's good with it, he's excited about it. His mom is saying how um, in more interested he seems in learning. So for me, just seeing that with him just makes me know that this is a step in the right direction. In that particular program, we're doing a pilot for three months just to make sure we can reach more than just one student. And I've asked special ed teachers to assess other students, and it's being assessed across the district to see if it's appropriate. Um, the Autism Curriculum Encyclopedia, where we have three students who are, are were, um, much below the two standard grade levels before we would provide an intervention. Um, we have an eighth grade student that's performing at about a five-year-old level, and we're looking at really making sure those solid life skills are in place, um, as that's the path that we've determined is best for the student. Um, and this program has really helped uh, model a, an appropriate program, and it really keeps the integrity of the program in place. Everything is prescribed. There's data collection systems to make sure that we're analyzing the data and looking at progress more frequent, frequently to make sure that um, it's the team is moving in the right direction. And if it's not, then we're able to make those decisions. So I feel like at least putting those two pieces in place, we're trying to get that momentum going for a pr appropriate curriculum for this population. Um, something that I'm very interested in is um, effective ed tech training. Um, I mentioned a little bit about part of the behavior specialist role being able to do that, but something one of our psychologists did in the spring was to uh, meet with all of the ed techs and talk about what kind of training they wanted. And I've kind of been, um, it's been very nicely given to me by administrators as I'm taking over the ed tech training for the year and making sure that their training that they're giving is relevant to what they're doing. Um, and things that they want to do, I'm making sure to incorporate that so they can continue to grow professionally. A lot of the staff that we have as ed techs are close to certification or certified teachers, so they're really interested in their own professional development, and I think if we invest in that population, our students are just going to continue to grow. They're the direct care providers. Um, Calm training is something that I brought in as well. It's something that I've used for a decade now. Um, it's, very, it's the de verbal de-escalation and physical intervention training. Um, there's been kind of um, a transition between a few over the last couple of years. You had safety care for the district, and then the trainer for that, I think, stopped working here. I don't know, I, I don't know what, um, what that stopped. And then you had uh, CPI over the last year or two. Um, some of the staff when I started voiced some concerns about CPI, um, just they didn't feel comfortable doing it, they didn't feel like there was a big de-escalation component, so I'm very experienced with Calm. I'm the trainer of it, and um, we'll have 50 staff trained by December in the procedures, and there's a really heavy push to do verbal de-escalation to avoid the physical restraint, which is my goal, is to never have hands-on kids as much as possible. Um, and again, that philosophy has been very well accepted since um, the school year started. So thinking ahead, uh, there's, in looking at what I'd like to do going into the, the rest of this year and into next year, is I think that we have the capacity to do some shuffling of current positions, um, reallocation of assignments, in keeping in line with um, we're providing behavior support, but I think our teachers also need academic support, especially for the kids on a lower functioning level. Um, I think I need to do a really good job of making sure that I appreciate that the special ed teacher role is twofold. It's a case manager, but it's also a special educator. And I think that we have to make sure to recognize what parts of those jobs need time, um, how, what supports they need in both of those. Um, and again, without trying to um, add anything substantial going into the next year. I think we have the capacity to do some shuffling and some redesignation of jobs. Um, and the staff, again, um, I've communicated with this, this to them, um, and they're very open to this, this type of shift, understanding what it means for their job responsibilities. Um, so just general supports that I'm looking at, again, as we go into budget season, I want the ed tech staff, um, I want us to be able to justify the need for ed techs. Um, you know, a one-to-one -one is much different than a resource room ed tech, and I think that we need to make sure that each position is warranted um, and making sure that I can provide you with the information of why I'm asking for ed techs in certain areas. 
Um, also looking at related services needs. Um, we have a very talented group of people and I've, I'm monitoring how often um, services are happening, consult is happening, and really taking charge of what their schedules look like and what services look like. And again, they've been open to that feedback, um, just making sure that they're also part of the team that working with students. Um, so as time goes on and we're looking at how we can use those resources more to, up, to do trainings for staff. So we have speech and language pathologists that are trained in social skills. Well, they, we could, if they have time, we could be using them in the classroom to teach teachers how to teach social skills or executive functioning skills. So we're not always relying on a referral to special ed. I want these things to happen in the classroom and then we're there to support it. So um, I love using resources that are internal and I think we have a lot of those that we're able to spread. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is the Parent Advisory Committee. Um, I've worked with Cindy Voltz um, over the last couple months and what we're trying to do is we're still working, meeting once a month, but I've invited guests to come in um, and speak to parents about kind of hot topics in special ed. So last month it was a meet the special ed director and it was, uh, we had a really good conversation about philosophical views moving forward. Um, next week we're having a meeting and Betsy Morrison, who's the director of Strive, which if you haven't learned about that program, it's amazing. Um, she's gonna come in and do a whole hour long presentation about the services that they provide and what parents should be looking for at what age and what schools can help them do. Um, we're also gonna have Pine Tree Services come in to start talking about case management and we have some voc rehab people coming in. Again, those conversations should be starting with seventh and eighth graders um, and I really want parents to have that resource and have that knowledge. Um, we're gonna look at social skills around the holidays. What do you do over vacations with your kids who are so used to the structure and you just need a vacation? Um, technology for kids with special needs. So these are all topics that parents have addressed with us and I really wanna make these meetings beneficial and have as many people attend as possible. Um, it was well attended by our administration too so it felt like a very good strong group last month and I'm hoping that it continues. I think that's all I have. Yes, that's all I have. So do you, any questions at all? Questions? Um, I just wanted to thank you for this really comprehensive overview. Just This is the most transparent I've heard special ed described since I've been on the board. And I love how you said, fortunately or unfortunately, you know a lot about behavior. And I say we're very fortunate that you know a lot about behavior and we're all ears in terms of your assessment of, of where we are in that regard. Mm -hmm. Your uh, approach of really um, offering first line training to teachers, understanding that we need professional consultation regularly available is wonderful. I wondered if you might comment, you, you mentioned about being careful about teacher loads and what you're asking mm -hmm. edu your special educators to do. Um, I know some of us talked about being really pleased you immediately asked for an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little what they've taken off teachers just so we have a sense of that? Of course. Uh, the teachers last year were responsible for the beginning to the end of all IEP meeting schedules so that involved um, basically chasing people around during the day to see if meetings worked and then contacting parents to see if meetings worked and then doing um, gathering everything together and then um, getting it to the person that files. So right now we have one central person that filters all phone calls. Everyone in the special ed department has uploaded their, cal their calendar to Google and this, well, she's amazing. I, when I look at her screen, I don't know how she keeps it straight, but she um, schedules all our meetings. She is the one that um, f handles all of the parent requests for files, any copying. She's the one that all the IEPs come to she just has so, put so many systems in place, um, has really made it more streamlined and it's taken that chasing part off of the teachers. Um, no more waiting for phone calls or this doesn't work for this person. Um, so she definitely has made the process more centralized. I'm guessing you're getting great feedback about that. Yes, very much so yeah. from parents and staff. Although some staff like to have the control of the meeting, but you know they've been kind of <laughs> apprehensive to let it go. But once they realize that they have, they're not using their prep time to kind of get the meeting scheduled. And once they mail it out, they hand it to Jess, and she manages everything yes. else to make sure it's done yes. the right way. Yes. She does all the reporting for us, and it's a great, such a great function in the department. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of course.
I do have questions. I want to mull them over and maybe email them on. Sure. Uh, process more. This is just a lot. Mm -hmm. It's great. It sounds really good. Yeah, any of these agenda items that you want for further discussion, I mean, they, we could always talk about them later as a, another agenda item, of course. Josh? There's just one thing I think would be worth elaborating on a little. I know m most of what your focus is on is making sure that we're providing the services that we need to, for, for all the students. Um, there's another aspect that I, I know from my own personal experience is really important and, and to the extent you can speak, speak a little bit about how this works is, is many of the things that are put in place for uh, kids who have special needs um, in the classroom and, and in the help other students who have similar problems that are not similarly identified or identified to the same level and to the extent that um, some of these things become uh, just part of the way we do things there can be um, impact and improvement in the whole group and and to the extent how do you coordinate do, do you have a chance to coordinate some of that uh, visibility and technique with with our new director of instruction and how that how that all sort of functions because I think there's an opportunity to um, there's some low-hanging fruit in terms of some achievement gains that we may be able to make with the resources that are already in place, and just in terms of making some more of this a little more visible and a little, and, the, and that the handoffs and supports are a little more transparent, and you get benefit outside of your target population that is significant. I think any time that you have, so we'll take executive functioning skills, for example, any time you have somebody working with a child in the classroom, you're working on an agenda, or you're working on note taking, there are kids in the area that also are going to benefit. And the idea, I mean, it's a very big chore, but the idea is that we're passing those things on to the classroom teacher with support by the special educator because I can't think of an eight, nine, ten year old that can't benefit from learning time management or writing an agenda. Um, and, I think that I think that it might be right now that regular ed teachers don't feel like they have the capacity to handle that. They do. I think we just have to give them the tools so they feel comfortable doing it. Um, but that's always been my experience is if you do it for one kid, five more benefit from it. And it also builds the skill set of the teachers involved. So that's definitely, um, but that's going to take time and support. But, you know, absolutely, um, that's something that would be a goal for all of us, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this sort of peek into the work that you've been doing in such a short amount of time, mm -hmm. how much you've really dug in and really tried to figure out what we've got going on here, where we need to improve, and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. thank you. And um, we, I will, where would we like to gather the questions to hand them along? Yeah, would you, you like to go through you? Uh, sure. You could come to me. Uh, or Andrea, then we will gather them and then we'll get responses and, and send them out to everybody. Great. Thank you. And, and that will be online too, so that the public has the right to know the questions and the answers. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Next up, superintendent's report. Um, this is going to be a riveting report, but. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but, but, but you should leave um, and go home to see your young family. And then you can get all the highlights tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me, if I can, go over a few things. I, I'm not going to read my summary of notes to you, but um, I just want to assure you that we are looking at an updated emergency plan, crisis plan. Um, we, we received really a considerable amount of um, support from the Cumberland County Emergency Management Team. Uh, I mean, they have really been uh, very attentive and supportive, and they are looking at what we have in place, and we've sent them along maybe three or four samples that we thought were promising, and they're trying to figure out what makes sense, but we've met with our police, we had one meeting with police, fire, school administration, um, and and we'll get back together again once I have something to, to share with them, but just know that we are taking it very seriously to revise our plan and also a condensed um, flip chart that can be used when there is an emergency that just takes us right to where we need to be and we know how it works and so forth. Um, we also discussed the, the need for doors other than 
the doors are intended to be open, to be locked during the day. If there are other people to go around, double checking that security. So that was reviewed. Um, but I think that we're coming along quite nicely in that area. The um, teacher. Uh -huh. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to interject quickly. Yeah. Um, I am certain that you are also using sort of the feedback and lessons learned from last spring. Prior to your arrival, there was. Yes. Well, the, the, the issues that I'm aware of, there are several. Um, yes. where, where we discussed um, by police and fire, and, and, and we all agreed that um, some things went well and some things needed to be uh, improved upon. But yes, those are, are um, we're, we're focused on those, and we, we, we don't want to um, repeat some of the things that we can clearly, clearly agree didn't go well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the new uh, teacher evaluation plan is definitely in place this year. Um, you will remember that this is going to be the major topic for your workshop in later this month, and it'll be led primarily by members of the teacher evaluation um, committee. Uh, Led by, by Marguerite, but you will hear a lot. And look forward, they'll look forward to hearing your your, uh, your questions and trying to answer them for you um, later in October. Um, Kathy Zeckard was able to arrange for a number of our administrators and some key teachers that are part of the committee to um, travel to Falmouth to have a meeting with with their team. It was a very, very uh, useful, I mean, I think we all just thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, all of us. And one of the things that came out of that for me that I, I, I noticed is one is that maybe we are a little bit ambitious on the number of visits we're going to um, be promising teachers. They felt that after being at this for a couple of years now, that they can't sustain the number of visits and feedback that, we're, that is our target right now. So we'll look at that, but that was nice to notice. They're using a software program to record the visits, these mini visits, and to give teachers feedback. I think they say they do it within 48 hours, and then the teachers have a chance to read it, and if they want to have a meeting, they certainly can have a meeting, they will have a meeting, but um, it, you know, it, it, it adds to our interest in trying to figure out what's gonna be the best way for us to uh, record these and to give teachers quick response to what people saw and felt about that. Um, and we um, feel that what we heard was that the mini visits are clearly an improvement over the old way that we used to do this. In other words, the direction that we're taking um, is they feel the right direction, it's working for them. We, we, we use a, a similar philosophy at, in going about this work and, and, and how we're measuring it. So it, it was very nice. Falmouth now wants um, to continue this, we do too, in, in getting our, our, our groups together and kind of talking about educational matters. So we're actually gonna, I think we keep that going and we're, we're excited about that opportunity. But we thank Falmouth for, for, for hosting us and thank Kathy for arranging it. Um, you, you know that, that, that Jessica and Kathy and I did go around to all the schools and met with, um, with teachers and staff about how things are, what we can do to help. We're, our, our next wave is gonna be going back to each of the schools and meeting with students. We wanna do that too. And um, so we'll, we, I, I, we're all eager to hear what students have to, to say and, and um, what we can do to support their teachers and administrators and help them. So that, I'll report back to you on that. The, the, the things that we heard, I outlined them for you, I won't repeat it, um, but it, 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 we took it very seriously. We appreciated the honesty of, of the feedback and ideas. Um, it actually helped, I think, get us prepared and focused on what we're working on this year. Um, and it'll also have some real bearing on what we see as perhaps um, priorities for upcoming budget discussions. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what comes out of all that. But it was, they were very useful meetings. Um, you already heard about the behavioral specialist uh, uh, um, from, um, from Jessica. Um, 
it, it, I won't repeat anything she said, but I think that she's on to something that we may, we, one of the things we heard, especially at Pond Cove, in the next place we heard it, but not to the same degree, was in the middle school, were teachers really wanting some guidance and some direction with, with how to appropriately work with children that have major behavioral needs and not let that disrupt the entire class. To be respectful to these children and be effective, but to, but to not let it get out of control for everybody else. And, um, and apparently at some point in time, we in the past we've had people on staff that were focusing on, be, on as behavior was their specialty, and over time maybe that's been reduced, I'm not sure, but clearly we heard that's a priority for them. Um, so I'm glad that she's looking at that. Um, you, you know that in, in your packet there is a uh, proposal with respect to a job description for the Professional Development Committee. We, I heard last summer, been hearing all year about teachers would really love to have more a voice and say in our priorities around professional development and the, the direction uh, of, our, of our work. This is uh, a, a direct response to that. This would be a committee that um, is primarily made up of teachers working with a smaller group of administrators and setting direction and priorities for, um, for teachers and, and staff at all levels, and hopefully ideally over, over having a long view, not just year by year. Um, so we're excited about that. You know, you'll see that later on tonight in the agenda. Um, on another topic of CIF, I met with CIF even today, earlier, um, Catherine and I met with them with, with, with her request about maybe how to go about uh, billing and paying for uh, grants. And they I met with three or four of their representatives today along with Ellen, and everybody was in agreement that what, what Catherine suggested made sense. It's kind of a shift um, in the future. What's gonna happen is that if a teacher has a grant, has been, has been awarded a grant, what she or he will do is that will directly send those um, bills to, to us in our office, and we will send one bill at the end of the month to CIF, which is gonna expedite payment and, and minimize the amount of work going back and forth. So that was a, a good um, sign that we're all just thinking of ways to work more effectively together. Um, apparently, I think that Michael and I heard the earlier meeting the, this um, last month with Steve that they've had a real success this year in raising funds so far. They um, you know, are feeling as if they're really in great shape. So it's all wonderful. Um, I, I'll leave it to, to, to John and Heather to talk about the, um, the Spurwick building, the, the, or that subcommittee, so I'll, I'll pass on that. We're required, like all school districts are, to have a technology plan revised and updated every so many years. Uh, Noel is taking the lead on that, working with a, primarily with a group of teachers from each school, I think four or five minimum, and then they're fanning out meeting with teachers report to get more feedback, come back and meet with Noel, but we hope to bring a plan to you um, maybe in November, maybe December, that would ho hopefully uh, ultimately receive your blessing, and then we would send it on to the Department of Education, but um, that work is ongoing right now. Um, and the calendar committee, we're gonna have our first meeting um, later this month, and I'm happy to say that, that um, I believe that is Elizabeth and Heather um, are going to be your reps to that committee, and and um, we have parents involved, teachers involved, administrators. It's going to be happy to keep Elizabeth, but we're going <laughs> to uh, come up with a, I'm sure, a great plan, and then we'll bring that to you for your consideration in a few months. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Howard, I, I know you mentioned the uh, professional development uh, dra draft uh, job description. Mm -hmm. Is that just for us to review and uh, approve at a future board meeting? It is. One recommendation I have is, uh, over, I've been on the board for six years and one common um, 
theme that comes up is uh, I've heard so many different definitions of what press professional development is. Um, in, in one group setting, it can get into working on curriculum or, or uh, department, um, you know, professional learning communities or supporting each other. So I think it might be helpful, um, you know, given it can, you can have creep or, you know, what is professional development? You know, is there a, we gonna have a committee, but, you know, um, it's, you know, current trends in education, um, professional based learning, student support structures, it might be helpful to, you know, what is the, what's the mandate or, or what's the scope of this? Is this gonna be a group that, um, given a lot of the uh, uh, curriculum work we have to do and, um, you know, does, is that part of this group? In terms of some of the training um, Jessica mentioned, was is that, is training professional <coughs> development, because um, I've witnessed over the last <coughs> few years, it's, you know, that there's a different definition. So one group, may say my needs weren't met because they had a certain definition of professional development where the school board said, well, I thought we were doing that as part of professional development. So a long-winded say of it might be nice to have a, you know, what, what is included in professional development and as a board, you know, what different groups are, are responsible for that? I appreciate those questions. Um, there are um, maybe I'll use the words professional growth for a moment. Um, it, it, there, there is professional development or professional growth at different levels. There's, there's actually there's the individual personal growth. There is uh, sometimes priority on a, on, a, on a school base priority, and then there's district wide professional growth. Of, uh, let's take for example um, uh, proficiency based education. There's an example of district-wide sort of cut across all schools and it's gonna impact the individual. I think, and Kathy is here, she can correct me if I'm wrong, I think this, what we're talking about here is primarily the larger district-wide priority of work and I'm confident that standard-based education, alignment of curriculum, proficiency-based education, those are huge and those are gonna be part of the work that these people as a group, think about how do we, what's our first priority, how are we gonna roll that out? Um, are we gonna offer some of this during the school year? Some of it will be offered over the summer? Is it gonna be, um, you know, that kind of planning? But do you want to hear about that, a bit more about that from Kathy right now? Or do you want that to be a future agenda item? I think future would be good, so there's time to. So we can yeah. put that down for a future yep. agenda item. Let her prep a little bit. Maybe after the committee's met a little bit, mm -hmm. but, but those questions are, need to be answered about what do we mean by this, and, and let's look forward to that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And then, Howard, the only other really quick question I have on the job description is um, the terms of employment for those who receive the stipend are for 12 months out of the year. Is that intentional to have this work continue over the summer? Okay, let's, um, let's have that be part of the, of the, and let's answer that question too. I mean, I think the committee will most likely meet during the, the days that teachers are, it's within their contract year. Okay. But they may be, may be leading or, or um, work that is offered on a voluntary basis um, to teachers over the summer but the committee's work will likely be during within their contract year. We wouldn't be, at, we wouldn't be requiring them to come in, at least I would think we would, and in the summer as part of this stipend. Not any more than we would other groups. Okay.
Um, also, saw a high school course enrollment. Was, are you talk a little bit about that? Um, right. Let's do that next. Um, you, you, you know this. That I hope that um, we we cite a policy that we have about courses that um, fall with the enrollment is is ten or fewer students. Um, th those would all be. Um, at the high school, and Mr. Shedd um, identified those for us and explained the thinking behind why those courses are uh, um, continuing. Uh, they weren't they weren't dropped. I mean, I, I support uh, his thinking on for all of these courses, and these courses seem justified to me and and um, should should continue. And I think he, he broke down through the details of his courses and. <coughs> And moments and so forth. Thank you for that. I know that we Perfect. get questions to the board. About yes. We do. So, also in communications, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the goals that came out of our mini retreat in September. Um, we don't have a, a document for action tonight. Um, ahead of time, we, I did send out thoughts about um, where I think we all landed, what felt like emerged, and um, so I just, I want to talk about it a little bit more along with, you know, some actions that the board is going to take trying to support those goals. Um, we're still wordsmithing a little bit around the goals, but um, in no particular order. Um, we have superintendent search. We have K-12 alignment. We have climate and culture. We have proficiency-based education. We have the teacher evaluation system, and we have resource allocation. Um, at this time, we're still working on trying to um, get some clear language to just help define those goals a little bit and have some goal language in there so that we can actually have some idea of measurement. Um, but the reason I wanted to make sure and bring that up tonight is um, an initiative that um, I wanted to see if the board supported and then um, I would like to, if the board does support that initiative, um, talk about it with um, Mr. Ash, who is in the back, um, which is to establish a um, conversation group. We don't have a name for this yet, but it, it's a group that would be made up of a couple of school board members and a few teachers. And that's it. It would be a small group. It would be a relationship building group just to communicate and find out what's on your mind, what's, on, what's going on with the board. Um, it would not be um, a place for someone to come in and say, boy, that Jeff Shedd is just bothering me so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, it's it's a place where, you know, uh, it's not a place to negotiate the contract, but things that are, you know, kind of within the contract, we would, it would say would be appropriate areas for discussion. But it, it, w it would never be um, negotiation. It would just be conversation and, and, how, and relationship building. Let's get to know each other a little bit. Let's have a, um, an actual built-in structure and a vehicle for that communication. So this is not, where, you know, this is where I'm trying to get people's temperature. It's like a, a straw poll kind of thing, but if people feel comfortable, then um, I'd like to go forward in um, discussing with um, Mr. Ash if he thought that might be welcome. Well, um, I, I, I think this, personally, I think this is a, a um, Clearly, several steps forward this idea, and and in part because I think there are rarely opportunities for school boards to sit down and have real conversations with teachers 
um, to know what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And the same thing is true for teachers. There just isn't this chance to, to understand each other and, uh, and have conversation. Um, and, and rarely, other than in negotiations, do you see each other face to face. And that isn't always the only or best place to really appreciate and understand each other. Perhaps if there was more conversation on the front end, that some of the issues that can easily get misread um, or unsolved in negotiations could be better, could it be improved through just better, uh, up, you know, increased opportunities for communication and, and understanding. So I, I, I mean, I say go forward, young lady. <laughs> um, obviously, we'll have to kind of work out the kinks a little bit and, and kind of make sure that we have some really solid ground rules around this. We, um, and I, I'm sorry I picked on you, Mr. Shed. I'll figure out, so, you know, that Ms. Hassan, whatever. <laughs> no, it was a good example. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we really, you know, we want, we want to have some ground rules about, you know, what, what it is for and, and really what it's not for so that we can go in, everybody clearly understands about, you know, this is for conversation and for, you know, not, not a gripe session. Mm -hmm. so, Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think at a, if people are interested and in, in like this, then um, at a future date we'll see who wants to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Anybody have? I don't have a lot of answers, but you can ask questions. <laughs> well, I just want to say one of the reasons why I didn't feel like I could formulate a thoughtful question for Jessica was there was more questions around process and feedback and how this looks on the ground and you know getting presentations in front of the school board is one thing but until you have a dialogue it's really difficult as a school board member to distinguish how our policies are being received in the district and so this seems like a great deal to get that sort of I like the idea. I would like to see what uh, this actually involves. I think, uh, you know, uh, from a high level, better relationships, sharing information sounds fantastic, but it would be good to have, you know, uh, what's the structure of this. I wouldn't want to get to the point where, um, well, we, this one said, oh, we met with the school board. We told them, you know, these were the problems, you know, that why didn't they fix them or, you know, we shared with us. So I think it would be helpful for everyone. Mm -hmm to say, you know, what, what, are, what are we going to discuss or what, what are the rules yep. of engagement just so there's no surprises and the worst thing would be you build up these big expectations and um, they're not fulfilled, which, will, which erodes trust more than anything else. So I think it would be helpful to flesh out what, 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 this, what this is. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. I think that... Um it, I think it's paramount, absolutely, to have those ground rules and parameters um, set in place before we go forward. I think that I was trying to be really careful about this, I, this idea in general and not invest too much until I felt like the board was interested in even moving forward in this direction. Test it out with um, CEEA leadership, see if they're interested in going forward in that direction, then we're going to get some very clear parameters ex and expectations in place. And just to add, I would say to be, uh, you know, teachers, uh, you know, faculty, or that's the same thing, but overall staff, because again, if it's, it meets and, you know, food services wasn't invited on, you know, it needs to, you know, decide what the scope and have mm -hmm. all groups re represented. I'd be, I'd be interested in hearing how Howard and Jess and Kathy structured their listening sort of tour. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think this would have more back and forth than just listening That's or conversation, That's informal would conversation, conversation would, yes. be, would be my suggestion that would make it feel worthwhile for all involved. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Great. So, 
thank you everyone that was listed, but it felt important that we talk about in public. Before, um, before we go past the report, can I just ask a question about the, maybe to Mr. Shedd about the number email about sections, Jeff? Um, CP Algebra 1A is what? Three sections, average class size is 13, but one dropped to nine. So it's a good question, and um, you haven't seen that title of a course yeah. before, and it's right. really new this year, and this year may be the only year that it exists. Um, what it's a reflection of is that for the past couple of years, the, um, at the middle school, there have been pilots to sort of increase the number of students um, who have the opportunity to complete algebra by the time they finish eighth grade. Um, which is a which is, has been a great goal, and they've made significant progress towards that goal. But um, in sort of working with the middle school teachers and the middle school administration and that sort of thing, one of the things that became evident is that although significant number of kids were able to accomplish that goal, a significant number of kids had algebra on their schedule, but they really weren't able to complete um, the equivalent of a, of a full year of algebra. So we had two choices, and one was to ask the kids and the families to have their children essentially repeat a full year of algebra um, and not accomplish the goal that they really set out to accomplish, which was to be able to start with geometry in, in high school, in or to do something a little creative um, and allow them to continue to move on to geometry um, but to sort of have a refresher or a completion course. So we created that system, and it's a semester course in Algebra 1A. Um, so it's essentially completing the topics, um, looking in more depth at the topics they weren't able to get into, into real depth in because algebra is such a critical course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those kids are taking a semester of Algebra 1A either this semester or next semester while they're also continuing on with their studies in math and taking algebra as geometry and at the same time. taking geometry at the same yep. time. So this yep. is a double up strategy. It's a double up, but it's a less rigorous double up than the board has heard about doubling up before because it's really only a semester, so it's not as much of uh, 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 squeeze on the kid on the kid's ability to take classes that they want to take. It goes back to algebra one part one days. Yeah. In a, in a sense, but what's different is the kids are moving on yes. as well. So yes. that's that's what's really different. Love to it. hear your assessment of how that worked out in February. <laughs> I mean I've been actually impressed and from reports from the teacher that the kids have really dug into it. I think the parents have, for the most part, bought in. There have been a few parents who have either moved their kids down to, uh, to just a full year of algebra by choice. Um, and there have been a few um, parents who have asked us, um, and we've met with them, about some other opportunities to do it in maybe even a different way, either with an online course or something over the summer or something like that. So there have been a few people who are doing things in, in different ways. So there's also straight one year of Algebra 1. Yes, absolutely. So between the 1A for some catch-up and the Algebra 1, how many kids are we talking about in the freshman class? Um, I think it's... It, I am going to be guessing if I tell you that, but okay. can I can I get you that information? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, thank you. Yeah, rather than try to make it up, I could guess, and I might be within ten, but I might be within thirty, and that wouldn't be very helpful. Sections of thirteen plus plus the one section of nine is that plus algebra one. Plus the algebra one, one. and that's what's not there, and so okay. that I can definitely get mm -hmm. get it get it to you. Thank you. I just, I just, I think with the changes that we've made, it's I, I appreciate this close monitoring of student need. Um, and this need may not go away. I mean, who knows? It, it, but I'd like to right. see where the numbers started and perhaps where they can move to after we've had more Absolutely. opportunity in eighth grade to fine tune the algebra instruction. So, happy thank to you. get that to you. Thank you. I'd just like to say I appreciate your creativity in coming up with another option. Thanks. <laughs> 
Moving on to item six, new business. 6A, consideration to appoint school board members. One delegate and one alternate to the main school board's association annual assembly taking place on Thursday, October 27th, 2016. I recollect us doing already or someone raising their hand i would nominate joe i believe she raised her hand did you do this do that i would that? second that <laughs> <laughs> i would third that wow. um, that was fast. it just so happens i think i'm open that day I, I was gonna say i feel i think we talked about it in caucus but that feels like such a long time ago yeah i just i sort of remember you saying you were inter i did it last year it's very I interesting i would be <laughs> thrilled to have you do it this year <laughs> I would I would be honored. Great. All right. So, do we want an actual motion or no? I feel like I we moved. have to have an actual motion. Yes, I'll do it. I move that we appoint be the de the Joe Morsey as delegate and Elizabeth Seifries as alternate uh -huh. delegate to the MSBA annual assembly taking place on Thursday, October 27, 2016. Second. Any discussion? I happily accept. <laughs> well done. If Barbara. elected. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if it wasn't you, it was gonna be Susanna because she's not here to defend right. herself. <laughs> All those in favor. Thank you. I would uh, make note, Ms. Morrissey, that last time um, before this met at a workshop or at a board meeting, we had a chance to look at the items that were coming before the delegation so we could slightly weigh in. And I think I they sent those out, but I haven't looked at them yet. We have a workshop before. The 25th? It. Right. Okay. So right. We'll, we'll workshop then. Perfect. Terrific. I haven't even read them yet, but I think those were disseminated. Yeah, so. they, they sent those okay, out. Right oh, great. I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> That's another bit of good homework. Item 6B. May I have a motion, please? Yes, you may. I move that we approve the following 2016-2017 administrative, athletic, and co-curricular personnel nominations as listed under item 6B. Second. Discussion or questions? Um, these look like they're um, long-standing positions. Nothing new in here? It looks. I, I think we just like to ask that question every time. I think we also, and it's heartfelt. Just want to extend appreciation for the extra time that people put into creating well-rounded, helping us develop well-rounded kids. Thank you. Agreed. All those in favor? Thank you. Over 6C, as we have already dealt with it, and 6D is tabled to a later time. Item 7 committee reports. Oh. So, Forming Building Committee met uh, recently, and the change in status of that was an uh, amendment to the school proposal from, so, from singularly taking up the space. To, to collaborate with uh, both the historical society and potentially the library um, and and potentially others uh, as part of their proposal and the up, upshot of that is that the school people who are putting the school proposal forward are going to meet with the historical society and come back to the committee to see if they if com coming up with a joint proposal looks workable um, and I think they were encouraged to do so as part of the goal is to maximize public benefit and that may uh, provide the best path to do that. So, so we'll see how that, we'll know. The next meeting I think is, our, our charge I think is looking to extend that out a little bit um, and so we hope hear back, people are in and out of town I think in November we'll come back and see if there's a joint proposal so that we can Great. roll that to the, the town council. Great. 
Thank you. Um, I already reported out every single thing policies talked about. Right. So I think <laughs> we're good. There's nothing left to nothing left to say. <laughs> I don't believe we've got any other committees at this time. Calendar will be happening. Yeah. That will be upcoming. Uh, school board agenda requests. I've got one as the professional development. Mm -hmm. yeah, well. And then the, the, the 25th workshop agenda item for the school board delegate. For the to come back and talk also about any update on the sticking of a, a, a shared group conversation between the board and right. the right so update on that. We want to come back to that. So, do we have announcements of upcoming meetings? I would announce that uh, the policy committee meets next on Tuesday evening, November 1st at 6.30 in the lower level of this building. We'll um, talk about any feedback from tonight's meeting and move on to a close look at the bullying, cyberbullying, new language that's been presented to us and I believe Superintendent is planning to invite the principals to join us for that conversation. And the next Berwink meeting is November 9th at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, location is to be determined. We still don't know where that is yet. I will remind the board that we have added a meeting on Tuesday, October 18th, which will be primarily executive session, talking about superintendent search and negotiations. Um, the location is to be determined. We'll get that out to you as soon as we can find a meeting space. Um, Tuesday, October 25th, we have finance committee and workshop. That um, workshop is dedicated to teacher evaluation plan, and at that time we will talk about the um, MSBA input that we would like to share with Joe. Okay. 25th is 6.30, is that right? 25th should be at 6.30 in the high school library. And the calendar committee, am I, I, that's circling my brain as um, October 19th. Is that still the date? It's the, um, let me see if I can find it here for you. It's going to let's see. I thought I wrote it down. That's, I the, but I've got that's the last I saw in the email okay. floating well, around. Have, but the date's been set, and I'm sorry, I don't have my that's, calendar. It's it's totally fine. That's just what I remember from the emails floating around, and we'll confirm. Yes, 19th. We got the thumbs 19th. up. Okay. And um, not sh do we know where we're meeting yet? Yes, the uh, middle school LLC. Okay. Thank you. And what time is the meeting on the 18th? Do you have a time on that? No, sorry, the board meeting on the 18th. Oh. Uh, I'm going to ask. Is this at 3.30? Yeah, the calendar committee is 3.30 to 4.30 on October 19th. And I'm sorry, where did you say it was? The middle school? At the middle school learning. Comments. Library and learning comments. Yes. <laughs> October 18th at 6.30. 6.30? Oh, okay. You had written seven to us. Yes, I had because I'm now I'm remembering um, Michael and Howard will be attending a different meeting for a short period of time. We do need seven. to meet at seven. Okay. I had originally seven. thought six thirty. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, so seven thirty. Seven. Would you prefer? Oh, we're we're open. Yeah. Would you the prefer calendar? we the um, executive session on Tuesday, October eighteenth? There is a slight conflict that. Um, Michael and Howard can. What, what, Steve starts at six thirty. I think we could be there by seven. You think you'd be there by seven? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's make it seven. Okay. Thank you for that reminder, Barbara. That's exactly. I just why. remember thinking that lets me watch the news, <laughs> so, which I love doing these days. Okay. And this, I will 
um, put reminders out to the board in writing, and these will all be publicly disseminated. Thank God for Andrea. Yes. Um, any other announcements of upcoming meetings? Great. Uh, <laughs> I'm watching Michael go, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. shakes his head. I move, we adjourn. <laughs> I second. All those in favor? Thank you.